Call me a fake fan, but I get into a lot of artists after they die. Pop Smoke, MF Doom, and most recently, Kentaro Miura's Berserk. Now I'm still pretty early in the story, but I already love what I'm seeing. It's filled with action, monsters, but most importantly, it's a story about a guy figuring out what he wants to do with his life. Dark Souls, Bloodborne, Final Fantasy, and countless other series have been inspired by Berserk, but you don't need me to tell you how good the series is, there's more Berserk videos on YouTube than there are influencers promoting fake cryptocurrencies. If you haven't heard already, the author and illustrator of Berserk, Kentaro Miura, passed away recently from an acute aortic dissection, which is basically when the aorta, the large blood vessel connecting to the heart, tears and blood surges through the tear. Now for the past couple of years, the series has become known for its hiatuses. Creating manga with the amount of detail as Berserk is incredibly taxing. And after years of consistently putting in 16 hour workdays hunched over a desk writing manga, only stopping to eat, you can start to understand why he would want to go at a slower pace. There's not much that is known about his personal life, but I think that he probably had some health complications that would have made it difficult for him to keep this up. He died from a condition that usually affects people in their 60s and 80s when he was just at the age of 54. However, Miura isn't the only one in the industry who suffered from serious health complications as a result of their work, and I think that this highlights a problem in the manga industry and Japanese culture as a whole. Now, let's say you want to become the next Kentaro Miura and you want to get your own manga published in a magazine. Well, aside from being Japanese, the first thing that you need to do is submit your concept or one-shot for your manga to a publishing company like Shueisha or Kodansha. These companies often hold contests for a chance at serialization, so you can use that as your opportunity to get in. Now let's say that somehow you get selected and you're next in line for your manga to get published in the weekly Shonen Jump magazine. Smooth sailing from here, right? The truth is that the real battle has only just begun. If you want to keep your series from being cut and you want to stay in publication, your manga has to reach a certain threshold for the number of sales. So you're pretty much in a tournament arc battle of manga to reach one of the top positions and until then, you're pretty much locked into the grind of continually producing manga week after week. Now I've only read a few manga and one of them is Attack on Titan, which if you don't know already was being released monthly before it ended. To be honest, I thought it was kind of annoying to have to wait an entire month for a chapter, but there's actually a really good reason for this wait. Whenever a new chapter is released, many mangakas have to go straight back into working on creating the next chapter. It's pretty much a never-ending cycle with only a few weeks off in the entire year. One manga creator shared their weekly schedule and they pretty much only had 3 hours of free time not working on the manga a week, and on some days only getting 2 hours of sleep and eating one meal. Now obviously this is really damaging to the health of a manga creator with many of them getting diabetes despite being so skinny from only eating two meals, as well as tendonitis from drawing all day and back problems from being hunched over their desks all day. Their schedule is literally worse than a Twitch streamer's. The author of Hunter x Hunter, Yoshihiro Togashi is also known for taking long hiatuses like Miura, as he suffers from lumbago which is basically an intense lower back pain. Now a lot of creators of long running manga have either stepped down or slowed down the releases of chapters, but one manga creator who seems to be unbreakable is One Piece's author, Eiichiro Oda who's been writing One Piece for over 24 years at this point. Now I think that he uses his assistants to help him produce manga on a week by week basis, but even Oda reportedly sleeps for only 4 hours a day. I'm not really sure how he's able to sustain this, but I'm guessing that he has a gene mutation that allows him to sleep less every day. While this problem is especially apparent for manga creators, it actually reflects a larger problem in Japanese culture. The word karoshi is used to describe the phenomenon of death from overwork. Working long hours is not only expected from a lot of Japanese companies, but it's also looked down upon if you work normal hours. One report found that 1 in 5 Japanese people are working over 80 hours a week. Japan is a very collectivist society and the success of the collective is often prioritized over the individual. And this is one of the main reasons that Japan suffers from this epidemic of overwork. At the end of the day though, manga artists choose to pursue the careers that they do, and they are extremely dedicated. Aside from meeting deadlines and living up to the expectations of both fans and their publishers, manga creators clearly have an insane amount of passion for their work, to the point where they have to sacrifice their own health in order to achieve their dreams. Part of me wonders though, do you need to sacrifice your own life in order to create a masterpiece? With so many of my favorite anime and manga, I see how the creators suffer from their work and I can't help but notice the parallelism in the works that they create. An aspect that I often see in manga and anime is the idea of pushing yourself past your limits, and I think that in some ways this stems from what they had to go through in order to create their manga. I think the boundaries in anime production are also what makes it so great. 
An average episode of anime has between 3,000 to 4,000 drawings, while an average cartoon has around 18,000 drawings an episode. Despite this, Japan continues to create some of the best looking animation in the world, and I think it's because of these boundaries that allow them to push their creativity. The last episode of Neon Genesis Evangelion consists of a lot of black and white sketches because of the time and budget constraints, but it's widely regarded as being one of the best works in the anime industry, and the creator Hideaki Anno was also severely depressed when he was creating it. However, despite all of this, I still think that it's possible to create a more humane system for creating anime and manga while still creating some really high quality stuff. I think the creation of online methods of distribution like Jump Plus and Webtoon can help with this, and with shows like Castlevania, we can see that it's possible to create stunning animation even outside of Japan. However, the culture of overwork in Japan will probably continue to exist, especially with declining birth rates and will probably be a while before it begins to change.